Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today I want to do a video that talks about making uh, smarter and more intelligent objects within ARCHICAD. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about uh, setting a subtype for uh, objects you create. Um, this will give them more parameters and make scheduling much easier, and also a couple other things that will just improve your objects. So here's a project I just completed, and we're going to zoom in over here. Uh, to the grill. Um, when my partner built this, he just made it with a bunch of standard model, no, excuse me, model elements. Um, walls, uh, columns, beams, uh, I think this is a morph up there, which is great. It's a one-off object for our use for this particular project, but if we want to share it on BIM components or want to use it again, or if we just need to schedule it for this project, we need to make it an object. So I'm going to close or jump away from this file to this one where I've isolated that grill. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to 3D. So here's that grill again. Now we've just brought it to another file just so it's easier to um, record the video. This could all be done in the main file, but for our purposes it'll be easier. So first off, if we look at these uh, elements, as I said, they're just generic things. And if we scroll down to ID, everything is just a default generic ID. You know, WL19, just a bunch of gibberish. So the first step I want to do is um, give them all specific IDs. So I'm going to select this and change it from WL19. I'm going to call that hood. And so I'm going to go through and name all those. The reason why I want to do that is when we get and make the object, that information is going to be um, useful to us for tweaking the object. So I'm just going to jump over here because you don't need to see me input that all and I've gone in and now if we look at these objects, we've got body, we've got um, you know, knobs or whatever I call these things. Uh, yeah, knob. So I've gone and labeled all those things and that's great. And if so now the next step is we notice that all the materials are the same. We've set it to uh, metal stainless, which is fine, because that's what this happens to be. But when you make the object, it'd be nice if we could make each part of the uh, object customizable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set each element or group of elements to be its own unique material. And you'll notice that the materials are horrible, but that's okay, because we want them to be obviously different because we can change them later. So now you notice everything that's yellow is handle, these would all be the same color eventually, or they would all move in concert, you know, so all the all the knobs would move to change together, this would change together, that would change together. So next step, now that we've got this colors differentiated and everything labeled, I'm going to select that, we can do this in plan or 3D libraries and objects, we're going to save selection as an object. Um, okay, we're going to use the floor plan. We're going to give it a name. We'll call it uh, grill example. Save. And now it gives me an opportunity to um, change all these colors to what we want. And now this is where we're going to take a moment. And right now it says material one. Let's go ahead and call that handle. And we could go ahead and say, you know what, that handle will not be stainless, it's going to be paint black. And we can go ahead and call this. We can look and see, okay, that's the body, so we can call that body. Um, this, I'm not sure why that's showing up, um, but I'm glad it is because I can show you how to hide that. Uh, we'll go and call this hood, and then we'll call this knobs. If you knew what pen 1 and pen 2 uh, reference, you can go ahead and change those as well. But now that we've got all that done, and let's go ahead and change the body to stainless, um, the hood also to stainless, and the knobs, let's make it paint red just so it pops out. So we're going to hit OK, and now our object is created. We can go to the object, it's going to automatically, or the object tool, it's going to automatically pick that. We can just go ahead and place that. So now, here is our new object. We go into its settings, materials, 
say, oh, you know what? We want the hood to be gold and shiny. Hit OK. And there it is, it's changed. So by going in and um, naming all this, all the materials beforehand, this is all smart. But now we got this material 3, we don't want that. So I'm going to go to File, Libraries and Objects, Open Object. Since I've got it selected, it's going to open that. Um, you don't need to know GDL, so this is great. We can just do little bits here. Parameters, so I'm going to go there. And now here's all this information, so you can see material. If I click that X, that's going to now hide it. And if I close that, and we open this object again, materials, now that general one, which made no sense, is hidden. So you don't even have to worry that it exists, because now it's gone. So let's go back, or at least it's hidden. It's not actually gone. I'm going to open the object again, which for me is command option O. And if we look at the parameters, we notice there's not much there. So uh, I'm just going to go to some, uh, I'll do this, we'll go to my favorites. Um, I'm going to go to some generic object, like a cabinet here. If we go into the settings of this cabinet, and we go to parameters, here's all the size stuff. We can go down to parameters for the listing, and here's where we can put in cost, manufacturer, product name, product ID, all the stuff that's, that's missing from our object. You know, if we go back to that, we don't, we don't have those. So we're going to open that object again go to details, select subtype, and now we can go down and say this is a equipment, we can call it residential equipment, select. Now we go back to parameters. All this stuff that just showed up in blue, let's close that, hit save, open our object again. Oh, why did we get that error message? Hopefully it was just an extra button I pressed. There we go. Um, so now there's all our parameters, which is great. We can go in and type that stuff in, but we can go one step further. I'm going to open that object again, go to parameters. Under manufacturer, if you know the manufacturer, let's say I make this. So we're going to type in shoe gnome. Uh, cost, let's say it costs a uh, million dollars. Is that a million? Yep. Um, we can type in accessories, we can say there's none, let's say it has a serial number, it's that. And this was made in 2013. Oh, and say LB, and we know it weighs 5,000 pounds, because this is ridiculous. We're going to close that, save it. Now we go into the object again, and we go to parameters for listing. This stuff can still be edited, but now in every single uh, time we place this, this information is defaulted in there. So if you're saving a specific object that you've created that is um, specific to a real thing, like a, you know, a Viking range or, or what have you, you can put all that information um, coded into the object so it's right there. And then when you schedule this, it's all going to show up there. So if we, I don't remember if I have a schedule in this file. Um, I don't do this one. But if we went to a schedule, it would all be there ready to go. I'm just going to look at my notes and see if I have anything else. I think that's about all I want to cover. Um, one bonus thing, when we went in and labeled all those elements as IDs, the reason I did that is if we go to the scripts in the 3D script, now I'll be the first to admit I don't do anything in this, but maybe someday I will. If we scroll through here, we can see right there, handle. That means all this gibberish, which is not gibberish to people who know how to code in GDL, that refers to the handle. If we go down, we can find you know, all the other IDs. I don't want to waste your time here, but we'll find that uh, all those IDs that I, um, that I labeled before we created the object are now grouped and embedded into this, so there's hood. So if you had to go add other information, it's all right here. So, you know, parameter, material attribute 4. This is all saying that the hood is connected to that. So that's a little beyond me, but it's just good to know that those IDs are showing up in this script deep down there. So I'm going to stop here because this is longer than I want to make it. Um, I hope you learned something on making uh, smarter, more intelligent objects. And most importantly, it takes very little effort and you don't need any special skills. You just need to 
feel comfortable opening an object, selecting a subtype, and then changing some information here. Um, and again, when you make that object, if you set the materials goofy, it becomes that much easier to make them um, more legible and easy to use in the future. So thank you very much.